Hello, and welcome back to Bloodborne. Um, I'm Swift Sword Rush, and if you haven't been paying attention, you haven't been noting the uh, uh, the uh, <laughs> the numbers on each of these videos. Uh, we are quite quite deep into Bloodborne, and if you have not ever seen Bloodborne before and you know nothing about it, it might be time to probably go back to the beginning and see it from scratch because we are going to dive headfirst into, well, we would be, let's see. Is there, did we already, give me a second. Um, we need to see if we've, got, no, key items. Did we, yes, okay, we have the item now. We're gonna, we're gonna dive head deep straight into um, head deep only only head deep not entire body just the head <laughs> we're gonna jump into the dlc which is pretty much the final thing we have left in the game to do we, there's really nothing else to do here um there's just the two final bosses left in the game so we we are deep into this so you better go back to the beginning if this is your first <laughs> if this if you're jumping in on this first episode or on this episode um and to kind of get oh man oh she's gone um let me no no no, no. we're we're not going to do that we're not going to do final game stuff we're going to do dlc we're going to jump straight into it uh the the dlc is picked up you have to well you have to get the dlc stuff first but then after you beat vicar amelia you are able to get this eye of the blood drunk hunter in the hunter's dream and you can go over here see this little body here wait a second to get grabbed and we will go straight to the dlc now the thing about the dlc in terms of storyline is it's kind of odd because it's like it's it's not any other place in the game you're getting teleported to it um and it's it's kind of a it's it's another one of the extra dimensional places in the game um sort of like the nightmare of mensis and uh, the nightmare frontier so this is another place very very similar to that but it's basically being generated by a specific great one which we'll see he's one of the he's basically one of the last bosses of the dlc depending upon what order you do them in um, there's going to be four different bosses that's what we're going to try to get through i don't know how well we're going to do on that uh we're, we'll see how it is uh, i am not going to spend too much time trying to show off any particular part of this DLC we're just kind of going to collect a few things here and there just because but otherwise we aren't going to we're not going to deal with these hunters we're not going to deal with most of the enemies we're just going to kind of run past a lot of this stuff okay so and the reason that there's hunters in it is because this place is essentially a punishment for a particular hunter in the game he he's only you can only see him in the uh well Let's go in. We're going to open the gate down here. It'll be easier if we open it now than if we open it later. Uh, there's a hunter in the Hunter's Dream. His name is Gearman. We will discuss him a little bit later, but he, Gearman, is known as the first hunter. He's the first guy who started doing all of this stuff, uh, started leading the charge against enemies, and because of that, he, the stuff that he did. This is punishment for that, and so whenever a hunter does something too crazy, too blood drunk, uh, they I think they get sort of teleported and locked into the hunter's dream, or the, this hunter's nightmare. Um, and yes, we're picking up this eye pendant from the scary looking thing that obviously it looks like a boss and isn't. It's fun to tease people when they first see it, because they're like, oh, this is a boss. Why are we going straight to a boss? And it, it's not a well, it's not a boss right now. It may be later. We'll see. Uh, so, yeah. Hunters get punished for the things that they do. And this is the place that they go when they are punished. So, it it's kind of weird in that case. Because it's sort of like, okay, so then who is creating this dream well it's obviously i mean the the great one that got killed so we're kind of the way this works is that we're going to start out in the present so the the that first lamp that we opened 
that's sort of the furthest away from the epicenter of all of what's going on. And then um, the closer we get to this Great One, the further back in time we're going to be. And... Leave me alone. Um, so we'll get closer and closer to the event that caused all of this. Um, so that's why everything in this area kind of looks like the normal game. It's because we are sort of, in a way, in the present and we are moving towards the past. So that's kind of also how the bosses are going to be. Uh, and Gearman, like I said, Gearman is kind of the one responsible for all of this. So it's sort of his fault that we're having to go through this and experience the punishment that he's created for people. Um, but of course, since it's like an extra dimensional thing, um, oh crap, I'm just getting around these guys real quick to open up this back area and also to talk to Simon, one of the few NPC, friendly NPCs of this um, Hunter's Nightmare. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, nightmares are fascinating very, very much. Okay, good, good, good. So we're already, actually, we're already back to the the lantern that we started at. It's right there. But we need to go deeper. Um, so the, the extra dimensional stuff, that's why it's kind of all messed up. That's why the area looks so weird. Um, and ultimately, once we get to the final area of the DLC, then we'll see that... Um, we'll see it be a place that looks like a real place. It doesn't look like a fever dream of some madman. Um, let's see. Actually, oh man, I didn't think about getting... Do we have pungents? No. Let me do this. This will make it a little bit easier. Don't stop touching me. That's bad boy. Um, yeah, it'll stop looking like this, this kind of nonsense, this nightmare. And it'll look more like a real place. It'll have... Like, everything will be put together. Stuff won't look like it's not supposed to be there. Come here. I want this hunter to come to me. And not the, the damn crows. No, stop that. Stop that! Come on, do do the attack that I want you to do. There we go. Got a good visceral attack on him. And now we can take care of these stupid crows. These are the only ones that I'm going to bother with, or these crows. Would you calm your... Calm... Calm yourself. Calm, calm something on your body. I don't care what it is, just something. Calm it and leave me alone. <laughs> uh, we're almost to sort of the first boss. We're, we're, we're kind of close anyway. Um, again, I'm trying to kind of hurry through these areas so that we're not spending too much time, but I do want to note the um, sort of gag-inducing river of blood that goes through this place. Oh, why did I do that? Um, and avoid these guys because they're very scary and I don't want to deal with them too much. We will... So what we're going to do is we're going to teleport... We're going to activate this lamp. Uh, this lamp will teleport back to the Hunter's Dream just to refresh on our blood vials, and then we will go straight into the first boss, which is Ludwig. Um, Ludwig is is probably one of the probably the hardest boss in the game. Um, I think that people have 
harder time with him than they do with a lot of the other bosses. There's Lady Maria, another boss in the DLC. Did I say four bosses? There's five bosses. I keep miscounting. Um, Lady Maria is a pretty difficult one, but I think that people get through her pretty easy. She's my favorite boss. Um, then there's the final boss, sort of the final boss quote of this, of the DLC. I think that people actually, I generally think it's somewhere between the final boss guy and Ludwig. And part of the reason that Ludwig is so difficult for people is because he's just crazy violent. He, he swings, or like his first two phases, he just kind of swings wildly all over the place. So it makes it really hard for people to kind of like understand what to do against him. Um, and that's why sort of he's so difficult versus the, the final boss guy. He actually has a pretty straightforward um, attack pattern that you can learn. I mean, it takes, it takes a bit to learn, but the first two phases of Ludwig, you just, there's, no, there's no real pattern to it, so to speak. It's just kind of chaotic. Now, I did want to make a note. There is a guy that, that, like, bangs against this gate. If you kill him, he always drops five blood vials. So if you're playing this game and you need some blood vials at this point, or want some a quick few blood vials, then you can go ahead and get it from there. Now, as you can tell, we've been following this river of blood, and it ends in this, uh, this fabulous blood sewer right here. <laughs> Um, which is where Ludwig is. So Ludwig is one of the hunters of, um, like, one of the really old hunters. And that's the Old Hunters DLC is what this is called. So you get a bunch of different stuff. There's, like, Ludwig's Holy Blade, and then the Holy Moonlight Sword that has stuff about Ludwig on it. And you hear a lot of talk about Ludwig because he's one of the first real church, uh, Hunters, like, Gearman was the first hunter, but he was kind of part of both Bergenworth and the Healing Church, whereas Ludwig was definitely kind of the advanced form of the hunter that the Healing Church developed. So, it seems like he's gotten punished the most. You can kind of see as a weird horse head and another growth out of the side of his body. So... We are going to try our best. I do not know if I'm going to be able to kill him. Because he is mega tough, you can already see. Uh, I'm, dealing, I'm dealing good damage on him, but that doesn't mean I'm dealing enough damage. And he... You basically want the strategy against him is to essentially... He has a lot of... He has weak points on his back. Or near his back. And you just want to try to get in under his attacks and kind of partially under him. But it's really hard to stay under him and he can try to jump on you if you're not careful. So, let's see if I can't not die from this. Oof. There you go. See, there's a limb break there, so you can get some hits in when you do that. You can also do this and get a really good hit. Uh, charged attack on his head slam. Or on uh, a really good charged attack on his head when you do that. Oof, I missed out on that limb break a whole lot. Let's see if I can do another... There we go. Then, at, this is sort of his second phase. He's going to start doing these wild charge attacks. Um... We need to get him down to about half health before he goes into his third phase. And we will hopefully see that third phase here soon. Oof. I'm getting... I'm definitely getting hurt from stuff. 
Okay, and with this kind of when he kind of does that, um, sort of charged leap into the air, you can get in a, you can avoid it easily by running in a tight circle. It seems that he. Uh, If I get hit by that charge attack that that launch they just did, oh, I, that's pretty much a one hit KO for me. That's why I, I like have to be so careful about dodging him. Uh, it's taking all of my focus to try to do this. I and I'm sitting kind of in a weird position for the recording, <laughs> so I'm also kind of disjointed by. How I'm positioned to try to do this fight. There we go. That was a good hit. And we get the... Uh... Oh, nice. Okay, so... Like I said, the Holy Moonlight Sword is his final weapon before he got transformed in, into this monstrosity. So his third and fourth phase use that sword. He's able to unsheath it and and start attacking you with it and this is the part that I'm that I always get screwed up um, but if we can beat him technically we get the moon, holy moonlight sword and I do have one in my inventory because I've gone through the DLC I think this like I think I've said it a few times in other videos that I'm like at new game plus seven or something at this point so the I have a holy moonlight sword that I powered up to use but we are going to absolutely get decimated if we get hit by that, so I have to be very careful. Oof. No. Oh my gosh. Oh, there it is. Crap. Oh man, that sucks. Okay, let's give this a second shot. Let's try to get him, especially because we lost like <laughs> like 15 million <laughs> echoes. <laughs> um I don't I don't know if we're going to be able to get him. And if I may have to do this off camera, I'm hoping not. And if so, then I will mark it in the video. And there, it may just be a quick summary of killing Ludwig. I don't know. We're gonna see. Oh no! <laughs> I tried to get the echoes and totally screwed up the dodge because I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Okay, so let's do this a little bit smarter <laughs> this time. <laughs> Instead of just letting myself keep getting killed by this. <laughs> oh, this is so unfair because when I when I went through the DLC before, um, I actually got Ludwig in one try. I got him in one shot. So it's like kind of annoying that I lost that footage because it would have saved me so much on having to do this and having to keep trying against him because we could we could be here for quite some time just like I was with Gascon or uh, Father Papa G I should say so that that saves me a bit um, I also have to comment that if you're doing this fight I highly recommend not using lock-on because Ludwig is really bad about getting out of your sight and um, making it difficult to attack him because your camera won't be able to keep up so yeah I highly recommend um, just Keeping lock-on off unless you just really, really can't stand to not have lock-on on. He's one of the few bosses that I, that I don't have lock-on with. Normally I do 
lock-ons just because it's very convenient for doing parries and such. But in this case, Ludwig is just too crazy of a boss to really do. To do that with. There we go. That's good limb break stuff for me. That saves me a lot of time. Oof, that was that was too close. I I almost didn't get that dodge. There we go. So that charge jump right there, just run in a tight circle and you'll always dodge it. It just I guarantee you'll always dodge it. See, and like I said, so with his first two phases, there's just no consistency. He doesn't do any type of attack in any kind of pattern that makes any amount of sense. So don't try to, like, memorize a pattern. Just try to memorize how attacks are happening. Like, the motion that he, that he goes through for doing an attack and um, getting a good muscle memory on what the reaction you should have to that once he does those different types of attacks. There we go. Now we can get into second phase again. I've, I've gotten really good at second phase, but or I mean on the first two phases, but this like second half of the battle, I just can't seem to do it consistently. Um, I don't know what it is about, the, about Ludwig's attacks that kind of screw me up so much. But I just can't seem to get the timing for them, and it's like the hitboxes always get me. I don't know. We'll see. We'll we'll see if if I can do this. If not, then it may be another episode. I'm trying to keep these to being about half an hour, so we're we're getting pretty deep into the episode right now, which is fine because the first part of the area takes a bit to get through. So let's see. Oh my gosh. Nope, 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 nope. All I really- oh my gosh, I can't believe that hit me. Oh my gosh, what was that? That circle, that the hitbox for that circle is really bad on, on that. Oh man. I think maybe we got one more try, unless I- I don't know, unless I die really quickly, we've got probably one more try to go. Um, he can, Ludwig can really back himself into a corner around some of those pillars and makes it really, really difficult to um, be able to, like, get, really get around him for his attacks. And so you can get stuck not being able to really really get around him and dodge effectively and it's kind of annoying when that happens and you have to try really hard to get back to get back to where he's out in the open and you can do something to him give me the blood echoes ha I got him I didn't get screwed this time I didn't screw myself on it this time No, don't hit me. Oh, no, 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 don't do that. Nope, that was wrong. I totally didn't 
wasn't able to take advantage of that um, limb break. Oh, and I missed that one too. Jeez, I am just screwing this run completely. Okay. Hopefully I can actually recover and, like, make good use of it. Oh, I am out of sorts. I am going to not have this wasted. Let's see. Circle, circle, circle. Is he going to do his little horse bite thing? Ha! Caught your backside. Uh -uh. Oof. Barely missed that. I'm just trying to get a little bit of extra damage in what, where I can. Just because I don't want to, like, have this extended out any longer than it needs to. Oh, and by the way, uh, so Ludwig does have a little bit of weakness to... Um, he has some weakness to serrated weapons and to fire, but generally he is not weak to anything. He's especially resistant to arcane, so don't try to do arcane too much against him because it just won't work. I've found that out the hard way trying to do... Oh, I thought we had done this limp break already. I found that out while trying to do Cost Parasite, which is one of the DLC weapons in this game. Um, haha. Yeah, so Cost Parasite is an arcane weapon, so basically the one of the one of the few magic weapons in the game, and it just does not it is not very fun to beat Ludwig with the Cost Parasite. <laughs> um, you're better off getting the Holy Moonlight Sword, and then on a second run trying to use the Holy Moonlight Sword's Arcane. Um, that goes a lot better. But, yeah, just don't... probably don't bother. <laughs> oh, Such an ugly mug. And you probably... You've, all the screaming, but this music, Ludwig's boss music, is some of the best music in the game. If we can get a... He actually does have a limb break. Oh no, don't do this to me. He does have a limb break that we can get a visceral attack on, so that's always nice. Oh, there we go. Yes! Now we can drain a lot of his... A good chunk of life there. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Get away from me. There we go. Ha! There we go! Ha! Take that, Ludwig, you jerk! You enormous butt! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Okay. Um, and you can talk to him, and there he gives a couple of different answers, but we just don't give a crap about him. We're just gonna kill him. And once you kill the head you get the Holy Moonlight Sword. So if you are playing through this, please do not forget to get this weapon because it's your only chance and 
Um, if you don't speak to them or don't do anything with them, I think it's possible to miss it, so just be sure to get it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and close out this episode, and thank you very much for watching. We just got done with the first, probably, not quarter of the of the area, but we're going to get into some of the more put-together parts of this nightmare um, and kind of see what was really going on with the Healing Church and what kind of horrors they that were behind them. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.